Hola everyone, welcome to another exciting and interesting episode of Jazz Siri. I am one of your co-hosts. Now what that means is I have some other beautiful African women who will be co-hosting this episode with me. But first you need to understand that I am Oluchi Inabong. I'm a serial entrepreneur and yes, I like the color purple. Hi everyone, my name is Sheila Oje. I am a communications professional and since we're talking colors, I like the color black. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Ernie Wine. I'm a media girl, I'm a mom, and I'm a whole lot more. I like the color black. Yes, I'm with <laughs> Sheila on this one. <laughs> Welcome to the show, guys. Hello everyone, my name is Omotunde Adeboale David. For a lot of you call me Lolo One. Of course, I call myself a, a multipreneur <laughs> because everybody likes money. Mm -hmm. And of course, if everybody is talking colors, I'm going to have to say I love the color yellow. Yellow. Okay. Yeah. I see a shade oh, of I, yellow. I see yellow. That coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today on the episode, we'll be talking about in laws. Now, not just in laws, how to deal with in-laws. A lot of us have had, I know we've had one or two personal experiences. Yes. Yes. I mean, we've witnessed yes. one or two of mm -hmm. them with other people, but tell us, how has it been having to deal with in-laws? Let me start with Sheila. Um, I, I, think it's, I think it's anyone you should be asking. You're the ones that are married. You're the ones that are married. <laughs> the ones that are married. Uh, okay. yeah. um, but I could actually just, I can just chip in. As someone who's divorced, um, I would say um, dealing with in-laws is something that is quite underestimated when it comes to marriages. Mm. Most times people just say, oh, I'm marrying the man, I'm marrying the woman. You're not actually just marrying them, you're marrying the family. As yes, well. entirely. And the family dynamic plays a mm. lot in, first of all, family background as well as family dynamic plays a lot in a marriage. Um, so it's very important for people to always know, like when you're looking to get married, mm. always pay attention mm. to the family as well. Mm. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and knowing how to deal with third parties because in-laws become third party. Mm -hmm. and, and it's both ways, your spouse's family before your now immediate or nuclear family yeah, as we went to well. school and yours as well. So it's not mm. just, you know, oh, my in-laws. Your family is also in-laws to mm, yes. your spouse as well. So most times we tend to forget that. Mm. And we tend to focus so much on the other parties' families and not looking at our own families and the kind of minorities mm. that they have and some of them that you have to deal with. My mm. golden rule really to a lot of my friends who are married when it comes to dealing with in-laws is let the person deal with their family themselves. Mm. Mm. That, that's that's very wise. That's, that's my golden rule. It's not in your place to deal mm. with your mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister-in-law, whoever. That is your husband or wife's job mm. to mm. deal with it while you deal with your own family because you know them best. best. Mm. Yeah. I, I, totally, I totally agree with um, Sheila on that one. One of the things is that we're all creatures of how we're brought up. Where we're, where we're from. And the nuances of everybody's family differs from the other. Mm -hmm. It's like playing a symphony. Sometimes there's discordant tunes mm -hmm. and the, 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 the rhythm just does not align. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the only thing is that in Africa, we're very cultural. Yes. That means we're family oriented. Mm -hmm. oriented. So it affects us more. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that in other cultures, they don't have um, families they don't have but mm -hmm. the involvement in marriages is not as deep yeah. as africans as Africa, yeah. so i i want to believe that in courtship a lot of people always forget that you need to not just look at the guy only mm -hmm. you need to see where he comes from mm -hmm. what kind of people are they mm -hmm. i i had a friend that had a, sim a funny experience she's from like an average family not that they were poor, but she married into a very elitist family. And her sister-in-laws were like Cruellas. Mm -hmm. You understand? They would expect her to pick, they would pick Ashwabi to gold, to mm -hmm. earrings, to, mm -hmm. they would buy this from Paris, they would buy that. And it took a lot of time to be able to Adjust understand her. that it wasn't, they were not attacking her. It's, it's just the family. That's how they roll. So you see, when it comes to in-laws, you need to understand who you are dealing with. 
so that the ones that you don't need kid gloves with, because I've seen many fathers, some in-laws that are super manipulative. Mm -hmm. I've seen mother-in-laws that would act like we're chummy, and when the son-in-law turns away, she becomes a tigress. Mm. And thank God for the advent of, um, uh, of cameras. That was how she was able to resolve the hostility of her mother-in-law. Wow. Because every time she would turn around and become hostile, mm. she would say it with a word of mouth. But her husband watched a video of how his mother was acting. In fact, he marched her out of his house mm -hmm. that very day because it was this video evidence. So you see, everybody just needs to sit down and count the cost of what, the cost of their happiness. Mm. How much, in, when I was married, I'm divorced now. I, I used to tell my exes that, my ex-husband then, that I'm not bringing from mine, you can bring from yours. Mm. So from it was, family members yes, mm -hmm. yes, I didn't want that. So I couldn't have anybody from my side. Mm. Neither could he have anybody from his side. Mm. So that one gave me a little bit of patience, a, a little bit of peace, because yeah. on that ground alone, their involvement in our lives were very minimal. Mm. So you see, it, it happens differently for everyone. Everybody. So just know how you're going to deal with your own. Exactly. But the most important thing is your nuclear family is so important. Mm. That's why the, 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 the relationship between the husband and the wife is so key because be that is what is going to affect every other Definitely. thing in the family. I think dealing with in-laws can be very, very complicated. I mean, we take it so lightly when we're dating. We yeah. think, oh, my, my mom in-law, she's nice. Oh, mm. the sister is good. We're all fine. But at the end of the day, the, your in-laws can actually make or mar your marriage. Yeah. Mm. You know, like you said, it can be manipulated. But one thing I usually say is that, first of all, you need to know the cost of your peace. Would mm. you rather get married to this person because you love him and eventually you get into drama and... Mm. No matter how good you are with your husband, if you're not at peace with your with your in-laws, they can take away your marriage. They can take away your peace, mm -hmm. right? And I usually say that don't start what you can't finish. Mm -hmm. Set your boundaries. If you want, if you are the nice, don't feign anything. Don't yes. fake anything. Don't try to impress anyone. If they like you while dating, fine. If they don't, it's better. Just know what mm -hmm. you're up against. And if you can deal, yes, you can mm -hmm. deal. If you can't, honestly... The love you have for your spouse is good, but it will get to a point that would not be enough. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I had, when it comes to setting of boundaries, I remember I had um, not an issue. It was just like a sister in love of mine telling me, using, you know, she said something to me that didn't sit well. And I just told her, oh, no, no, no. And she tagged me as being arrogant. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, it's fine, no problem. If that's what you think, it's all right. But I just feel that we take it so lightly. But these things are very, very, very serious because mm. you meet some in-laws that you just feel, really? So mm. people can be like this. So yeah. at the end of the day, you need to, you know, you need to be calm. You need to be sure what you're getting into, not just with the guy, but with mm. the family as well. And with your own family is really, really yes. key. Hold your people, mm. let your husband hold his people. Mm. I like that. It's like two <laughs> ram fighting. Yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> and, and it's very important. And sorry, just to just really need to cut you, but there's also this thing of understanding that that is who your spouse has known from when they were born. Mm. Their family, right? And so and I find that yes, mother in laws can be we have a lot of Nollywood movies and a lot of stories about mother in laws and father in laws and sister in laws and all of them. And one of the things that I learned, because my father's an only child, and he's like, oh, yeah, my mom was very problematic. Like, oh, yeah, mm. she was troublesome. Mm. <laughs> like, and he owns it that his mom was troublesome. But then there's something he said. He was like, he had to get to that point where he, he sets clear boundaries mm. with his own mother. Yeah. And then also had to explain to my mom that, you know, she's protective because this is the kind of childhood I have. So give mm. her some time. She will come around. So... I would also say for spouses going into or people going into marriages, don't go with the notion of you're going to fight wars. Hmm. Yeah. It's not There's always because true. if you're yeah. going with that mindset, you will find faults in everything. Yeah. Don't Even go when in with that. None. Yeah, don't go into the mindset that you're going to fight. Go in with the mindset of these are this, this his or her family that they've known from when they were born. All you're doing is coming to learn who they are and know because just like the way you would set boundaries with friends. Mm. You're learning who they are and you will set boundaries 
as well with them when necessary. Yes. Yeah. Now, all, all this talk is, talks about in-laws. I mean, if you notice, a lot of times, a lot of Nollywood scenarios have mm. been mother-in-laws, exactly. sister-in-laws. Mm -hmm. It got to a point where girls, women, they're praying for their mother-in-laws to, <laughs> to be dead. Mm. I mean, I'm happy you're alive, you know, just so you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know a mother-in-law that would want to hit her daughter-in-law. Really? What she just does, she's an old woman. If she touches her, if you just push her a little, she can fall and just... What she just does is she, she just steps away. Mm. And say, Mama, please calm down. Mm. You understand? You she could have stayed and allowed that slap to land yeah. or had to hit her so that she can have enough fuel to say, yes, I, I, ha I had a right to do this and that. Mm. It's the cost of happiness mm. and peace for her home. She just sidestep the woman. So you have to just find a way to, you know, understand who these people, if they have violent tendencies, make sure, make sure that you take yourself away from that violence. Mm. First and foremost, if she's making a ruckus, you can lock yourself up in your room until everything calms down. Mm. Because if you want to fight your way through it, like Sheila said, if it's a war thing, war comes with scars. Yeah. It comes with yeah, casualties. Mm -hmm. So you don't know who is going to fall on. Mm -hmm. I know somebody presently now that says that his wife shouted at his mom. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the mom had a stroke. Mm -hmm. So tell me, can that marriage work? Mm -hmm. She's already, he, he resents his wife, forgetting that his mother is cantankerous. Mm -hmm. But because the woman now has a stroke, she can't be blamed any longer mm -hmm. because she's the one that is ailing. Mm -hmm. So you see casualties. But people tend to be in denial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is where the problem starts in marriages when it comes to dealing with in-laws. Mm -hmm. So you grew up a certain way. Chances are maybe you come from a very toxic family. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. And then you don't know that you come from a very toxic family because that is what you are used yeah. to. You are mm -hmm. used to the toxic, your toxic, toxicity. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you then have a wife or a husband who says, this is not normal right the way you're being treated or the mm. way this it's not normal mm. it takes someone with a high emotional intelligence to be able to step back mm. and look and say oh okay maybe maybe yes if my spouse isn't comfortable with this maybe we need to set boundaries here mm. so maybe you come from a home where your mother is a stay-at-home mom and all she's done is take care of the home, cook, clean, and that's all she knows. And then you marry a woman who is a career woman, mm. who is a high-flying woman, who is, it doesn't make her less of a wife or mm -hmm. a woman. Right? Yes. But she can already see that there will be a clash. Oh, yes. Because the mother's idea of a wife is who she is, while your wife's idea of a wife is who she is mm. so as the husband it is your job to come in and be able to separate, separate. right mm. and also let you know make your wife understand oh this is how my mother is and then also make your mother understand i like my wife the way she, she is, is. Yeah. not going back to trying mm. to change your wife to be someone else someone it's else. the same thing for women most women want this father figures and everybody wants to marry a man that reminds them of their father one way or the other, right? Not in all cases, but you find that. But you also need to find that, you know, we're in a very different generation. We're in a very different um, economic climate at the moment. So I find that people are always talking about, oh, my father provided for my mom everything mm -hmm. that she wanted. And I'm like, yeah, house rent was not five million. That's at that time. Yeah. School fees was not in the millions at mm -hmm. that time. So if you're now in a position where you guys are splitting the bills, it might not be 50-50, it might be 80-20, it might be something. Mm. It's not for you to now go and start blabbing to your family to say, yeah. oh, this is what we're doing now. Yeah. Because when you do that, obviously your father is going to be like, ah, he's not a man, mm. he's not mm. a man. Yes. And then that brings a problem and that, mm. that brings in too much pressure. So it's really understanding each other, understanding your background. And then being aware that this person that you're bringing into this life with you is not used to what you're used to. Yeah, yeah. right. Thank this is you. quite an interesting topic. Yeah, we can go on and on. On and on. on. Right. <laughs> All right, so on today's episode, we're talking about dealing with e-laws, but let's take a quick breather. When we come back, we'll still have more on Jazz Series. You 
New Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the New Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central. Africa first. Welcome back to, to the exciting episode of Jazz Siri. Now, today's topic is all about dealing with in-laws. So there was a time when the words women and career did not go together. But I mean, times have changed. In just 2017, there were over 75 million women aged 16 and older in the workforce. And this is representing about 46.9% of the total labor force. Now, there are workplace gaps that are currently existing globally. Well, we're joined by Vumi Misweli, a career coach and CEO of Headset Consulting all the way from South Africa. What more can women do to increase this number and how can women even get to the managerial roles that includes decision making in the corporate space? I think the first is for us to understand that what's required in the senior levels is not the same thing as what's required to succeed in the bottom levels. So in the bottom levels, we worried about your technical competency, we worried about your experience, we worried about um, your qualification. The more senior you get, you find that the role shifts from tactical uh, to more operational and strategic. So by learning to institute those skills and acquire the skills that are required by getting more exposure to projects, by speaking up, using our voice, um, really arriving in a manner that says, I'm ready for that next role, and being a little bit more aggressive in putting up our hands and taking those opportunities, we find women starting to penetrate. I think there's some fantastic lessons we can learn from our female counterparts in countries such as Iceland, in, uh, in um, African countries such as Rwanda, where the legislation as well as the practice encourages more women in, in arenas, even in parliament. Right. Now, one major tip to any career acceleration or career advancement is for you to find a female mentor in this context. Now, looking at um, the number of women who are in top managerial positions, they are quite low. I mean, the numbers are in single digits as compared to the male counterpart. Now, how can this be resolved? Remembering that you um, just said it, and even the statistics say that we have women in the lower position as against the higher, um, as against the managerial, managerial roles in the corporate space. I think mentorship is a key role. You know, um, currently in South Africa, we've got Nelson Mandela Day, where we actually, in essence, give 67 minutes to, uh, to be able to help other people. And I'm involved in 67 Mentors, where there's some global leaders who are from South Africa who are volunteering their time for mentorship. So mentorship is a key pillar. But I think the focus is we've made it the only pillar. It isn't. There are various other pillars that we must institute in our personal development to get to that next level. There are a finite number of women at those top tiers, like you've mentioned very cor correctly. So what other tips and tools can you use? You can make use of a coach. You can make use of sponsorship. You can make use of an investment in your own personal development to drive that. And a lot of us think that the moment we get a mentor, we automatically, via osmosis, acquire their knowledge, acquire their networks. And that's not necessarily it. Mentorship, in essence, should be somebody teaching you strategies that they've employed that you can employ. So if you can't have that a cup of coffee with your said mentor, do they have a book you can access where you can learn the principles anyway? Right. And I think we're doing ourselves a disservice if all we focus on are female um, mentors. Right. We can now, learn quite a lot from male, uh, from male mentors as well. Right now, one more question before I let you go. I mean, we're looking at um, looking at the situation of things and knowing that women are really putting, if not two or three times the effort as compared to the male counterpart. Now, how, at what point will a young, vibrant woman draw the line between her being visibly, um, visibly vibrant and um, having a strong personality as against her being perceived as arrogant or even a brag lady? Oh, that's a very good question. And the reality is this. It is a fine line between confidence and arrogance. 
Confidence is saying I'm comfortable in my own skin and this is the value that I can bring. Arrogance is how people perceive you as being condescending. So sometimes, and I often like to say this, we judge other people with their actions and judge ourselves with our intention. So it's very, very important that we gather that feedback. If people are giving you that feedback of, I think you are being a little bit much, is to then tailor your message for your audience. Whilst also accepting that you're not a, you're you're not jello rice, you're not going to make everybody happy. So you have to be comfortable in knowing not everybody is going to like you, but in how you show up. Yes, this is the value I can bring. This is the service I can add, while still ensuring that you're authentic to yourself. The moment right. you cross over to having to be inauthentic in order to get that buy-in, you already have lost your target audience. Right. Thank you so much, Vumi Misweli, the CEO and the career coach of Headset Consultant all the way from South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us at this time. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Vumi Misweli, for that wonderful interview. You heard it from her. So talking about the career gap and what we should do to ensure that the women in the lower level position can have mentors in the upper level position. But that's not all we have. I think we have any who has something cooking already. Yes, 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 ladies. <laughs> it is time for eye candy. Guess what caught my eye today? Mm. So this is an amazing quote from Angela Bassett. It says, don't settle for average. Bring your best to the moment. Then, whether it fails or succeeds, at least you know you gave all you had. We need to leave the best that's in her. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I, I, that, that's yeah, such a yeah. powerful, powerful statement. I, I, I love that statement because I, I always tell myself, this is one of the things I used to push myself. I said, I would rather die trying. Mm. A lot of people would just say, because I have done a film, it didn't do so well. I'm about to do another. Because if you stop at the first time you failed, you will never know that sweet taste of victory, mm. of success. Everybody that I've known that have achieved any great thing, they all come from that furnace of affliction, of challenges, of hit and run, of, mm. of not having attained. So we have to keep trying and <laughs> in fact, I love this new generation that say the only thing I owe myself mm -hmm. is to dress up and show up. Show yeah. Up. As long as you show up, the rest is history mm -hmm. because you never know what that day or that time or that mm -hmm. circumstance can bring your way. Angela Bassett, that is words of marble. First of Honestly. all, I love Angela Bassett. Yeah. yeah. So Ageless. Beautiful. Ageless. Ageless. Oh. Beautiful woman. Um, but for me, this quote is really just being the best version of yourself at all times. Mm. And you know, most times we always feel like it's when we get to a particular level or when we get that dream job or mm. when we get that dream position yeah. before we bring our best. Whatever it is that you find yourself doing, no matter how small, do not settle for average. Mm. Do not always bring your best foot forward. Because if not for anything, people will remember yeah. that you always brought your best foot forward. forward. And it's, it's something that I live by. So this quote for me just means a lot. Just yeah. always be the best. Oh, you know, I almost clapped. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, every day comes with its own challenge. I mean, you know, different day, different challenge. But there's one thing I do for myself. There are times I'm probably going out or probably going to work and I'm not so happy, I'm not excited. I tell myself, like I intentionally say, Eniela, you are going to be happy. And I put, I just play music, any music that I can, I can vibe to, I can, I would just say, you have to be happy, okay? You have 24 hours, it's going to go. So just make sure you do it, do it and do your best, all right? You're gonna be fine. I mean, I tell myself, I don't imagine it, I'm speaking literally to myself. Mm -hmm. And yes, I just play music and whatever it is, I, I vibe and it. off I go. Yeah. <laughs> so really, I think it's really, I think it's something, it, we have to be intentional about it because mm -hmm. challenges will come. If it's not from the house, if it's not family, there's going to be somebody on the road who wants to mess your day up. So really, you can't afford to give in to things like that. If, if you live in this part of the world, if you live in Lagos, Las Gidi, Eko Oni Bajel, there's no way in a single day someone will not try to step on your toes. Yeah. For me, it's not just you not settling for average. Do not even settle for mediocrity. Mm. 
Because at this point in time, we are now raising the standards. We're raising yeah. the bar. We as women, African women, are doing what we need to do. And we're even going over the top, beyond mm -hmm. and over, in, in ensuring that we put in our very best. And now, for me, a lot of people see me as a happy bee. I'm this hyper energy yeah. queen. Yeah. And, but people do not understand that a lot of times I have to psych myself with that. Yeah. I am not always happy. Yeah. I am not always a happy bee. Jibril, no. I am not always that kind of person, but I always have to psych myself up with yeah. that, give myself that energy. It might be a song, just like you said. It might be a story. It might be a news I heard that morning, and I'm just tapping into that person's, oh, la bo, sha, ta, ta, tapping into that blessing. <laughs> okay. And that could just be what lifts my spirit yeah. and makes me say, you know what? I will not settle for average. I will not settle for mediocrity. I will be my best at all times. Every once in a while, look in the mirror and just smile. Hmm. appreciate your beauty yeah appreciate that you know what i'm not i might not be perfect but mm -hmm. guess what i'm beautiful oh regardless. yes regardless and then just know that when you learn to appreciate yourself then you will learn not to settle for mm -hmm. less and on that note so thank you so much for that eye candy it's yes. a, oh, sparked a lot of conversation mm -hmm. after the break we'll be going straight into just siri moments do stay with us Welcome back. So today we've been talking about so many interesting things mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. being our own high person to dealing with in-laws and family dynamics and things like that. Now we're going to talk about just searing moments. This is like one of my mm. favorite sections of, yeah. uh, of the show. But for this particular just searing moments, it's not just us sitting here. It's also something that I want you at home to do as well as watching this show. What is one physical attribute that you like? about yourself or that you love about yourself mm. Lola? i like my teeth <laughs> you have beautiful teeth yes yeah. i've heard a lot of people say that <laughs> oh lola your smile is amazing your teeth is beautiful and i used to tease people that if i was a serial killer i was going to collect teeth oh, Lola. <laughs> <laughs> the so that's to scare you <laughs> uh, mine is the smell Mm. Like, <laughs> it's always smile. a smile for me, okay. the smile, yeah. Okay. Okay, so for mine, uh, um, irony has been my legs. So for mm. so long, when I when I went to boarding house, I, mm. my legs were abused. They told me I had the arm leg, or several mm. leg. Until one day, I just, and I stopped wearing things that were below my knee. Mm. So that, yeah. so I had that pressure, I had that intimidation. But one day, I stumbled on this, my leg somehow, and I'm like, ah, damn, girl. it's fine. Right? This <laughs> leg is nice. I, I have seen and your legs, they oh, are beautiful. Oh, I've seen sure. Until tomorrow. <laughs> I ensure <laughs> next. So yeah. I ensure that every opportunity I have to flaunt them, I flaunt them with confidence. Oh Absolutely. yes, that's the spirit. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I know I spoke about my smile earlier, but one of the things I love about myself is my body, mm. which is yeah. very interesting because um, I've I've always been that person that, for, as a kid, you know, very self conscious, low self esteem, mm. and everything. And then you, I just started growing and owning it. I don't know yeah. if it's about getting older or it's about having a kid. Yeah. But there was just that thing of just loving yourself and just yeah. being, damn, I'm good looking. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. like, oh, yes. like, I am good, good looking. looking. Like, I'm, and there's that level of confidence that comes with it mm -hmm. as well. It's like, have you seen those legs? Have mm -hmm. you seen those curves? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so that is, that is one thing that I, I would say I love about myself. So for those of us that are at home, Think of one thing, one thing that you love about yourself. And on that note, we would like to say, be bold, bold be, be strong, strong be a Jassir woman. woman. Mm -hmm.